Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your holding today's hearing on the nominations to lead the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Both agencies are highly visible, complex, and were given very broad jurisdiction by Congress to act in their areas of expertise. In addition, each agency expends hundreds of millions of dollars every year to fulfill their respective missions. Mr. Cordray appeared before us last year at his nomination hearing, so we've already had a chance to get to know him. And Ms. White has extensive experience in our fin financial markets, uh, both as a highly regarded U.S. attorney in New York and as a securities law practitioner. I look forward to hearing from both nominees. Both the SEC and the CFPB were created after significant downturns in the financial markets. Nearly 80 years ago, Congress established the SEC to restore investor confidence in our capital markets and to ensure orderly markets for stock trading and investing. The CFPB was established more recently as a part of the Dodd-Frank Act and is intended to sweep all of the consumer disclosure laws into one entity while leaving core prudential banking regulation with the other respective banking regulators. However, the SEC and the CFPB are administered in quite different ways. When established in 1934, Congress decided to create the Securities and Exchange Commission based upon the structure of corporate boards. Congress set forth that the SEC would be comprised of five commissioners. Each commissioner would be selected for a five-year term and no more than three commissioners from any one party. Around this same time, Congress also established the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Again, Congress established the FDIC with a board structure. Both, of the SEC and, and both the SEC and the FDIC have survived nearly 80 years, and the board structure has provided sufficient transparency and openness so that Congress and the general public have a very good understanding of each agency's mission and operation. Unfortunately, the CFPB lacks this transparency and openness regarding its operations, budget, and intended activities, its, its intended mission. The Dodd-Frank Act specifically elevated the director of the CFPB so that he or she holds unique power to determine the agency's budget and mission priorities without any public debate or input from Congress. For example, in fiscal year 2012, the CFPB spent more than $150 million on contracts and support services, which is more than the agency spent on employees. This is nearly half of the money that the CFPB received from the Federal Reserve last year. There is no public accounting on how these monies on contracts and support services are being spent. To alleviate these and other concerns, I believe that the structural changes to the CFPB that the, we have recommended are essential. Moving from a single director to a board format is one of the important steps that will bring about the transparency and openness that now exists with the SEC. In addition, the agency needs to be put on the federal appropriations process so that Congress knows how the monies are being spent, especially on items such as contracts and outside services. And finally, the prudential regulators need to have more than just informal input into the CFPB's policy and rulemaking decisions. With regard to the President's recess appointment to the CFPB last year, my opinion has not changed. I continue to believe that the recess appointment was unconstitutional. The recent court case involving the National Labor Relations Board found that those recess board appointments violated the Constitution. Since the CFPB recess appointment was made on the same day, to me the same result should apply. Recently, members of the Republican caucus sent a letter to the President objecting to the confirmation of a head of the CFPB unless these structural changes are made to the agency. Structural and other changes to the agency are, I believe, areas where we can work together to improve the operation of the CFPB and to improve accountability. Mr. Chairman, I look forward to hearing from Ms. White and Mr. Cordray on their qualifications to head the SEC and the CFPB. And again, I appreciate the chance to work with you on these nominations. 